Okay, so for this problem, um, we're asked to determine how many of the following molecules are polar. And we are given each one. So, first of all, we need to draw the Lewis structures of the molecules so we can see what they look like. So when we see how many domains there are, we can figure out what are the geometries of that molecule. And with that, we figure out the partial charges and both bond dipoles with the electronegativity of each atom so we can find the net molecular dipole if there is one. So first we started with SO3. So drawing the Lewis structure you put S in the middle and I put a bond for each oxygen. I figure out how many electrons there were in this molecule and there were 24. And with one bond I subtracted 6. Uh, the rest, we, and we were left over with 18. The rest went on each of the outside atoms, but we can see that sulfur does not have the octet. So we would have to do a double bond in order to complete sulfur's octet. When we do that resonance structure, we figure out that all three of these are valid and good resonance structures. So we know that there is no such thing as a double bond in this molecule, but there is like one and one third of a bond shared between ox each oxygen and the sulfur. So we know that this molecule has three domains and it would look something like this. And we know that its geometry is trigonal planar. So then we figure out the electronegativity of oxygen, which is 3.5, and the electronegativity of sulfur, which is 2.5. Since 2.5 is less, the positive side of the dipole goes towards the sulfur and the negative side goes towards the oxygen. However, since this molecule is trigonal planar, all of these dipoles are going to cancel each other out and there's going to be no net dipole. It's important to point out that the reason that this molecule is not polar is because all of the domains are the same, so all of the poles are the same. If one of these molecules would be something else, like another sulfur, then this molecule would be polar because the pool on here wouldn't be the same as the pool here. Now we move on to OF2. So first we have to figure out how many electrons there are in this molecule. And if you add the 6 from the oxygen plus 7 times 2 from the fluorine, we get 20. So we put oxygen in the middle and we bond each fluorine atom to the oxygen and we subtract 4 which would give us 16. We then add 6 non-bonding pairs on the outside atoms and if you get 16 minus 12 that you put 6 on each outside atom then we would be left over with 4. So then we move on to putting them into the central atom which gives us an octet for all the atoms. Therefore these is a good structure. Okay, so now we figure out the geometry. So there are four domains because of the non-bonding pairs. So the domain geometry would be tetra tetrahedral, but since we have two non-bonding pairs, the molecular geometry is bent because these do take up space. Then we figure out the electronegativity. We know fluorine is the most electronegative atom of all, and oxygen is not the most electronegative so oxygen is going to be in the positive end of the dipole and fluorine is going to be on the negative spectrum and we have two dipoles going down and we have none to cancel them out so we see that the net molecular dipole is going down because is going down because we have nothing to cancel it out here it's important to know that if this molecule had all four domains the same then it wouldn't be polar because the bonds the dipoles would cancel each other but since we have two domains that are different then we have as a result a polar molecule so we know that this one is polar we move on to BELC we figure out how many electrons there are in this molecule in total we know that beryllium has two electrons and chlorine has seven each so 2 plus 7 times 2 is 16. We put beryllium in the middle and bond one chlorine, two chlorines on each side. 
you might wonder, add two coins on each side and then we subtract four electrons, which would give us 12, which we add on the outside atoms, six and six, and we're left over with zero electrons. You might be wondering why we don't want beryllium, why beryllium is not, does not have an octet, but it's because this is one of the exceptions. This atom does not require an octet, so this is a good structure. We go on to figure out the geometry. Since there are no non-bonding pairs, two domains equals a linear geometry. So this is one of the cases where the molecule does look like this. We know, we then go to figure out the electronegativity. We know that chlorine's electronegativity is 3 and beryllium's is only 1.5. So the, uh, the dipoles will be positive where beryllium is and negative where chlorine are. Since this molecule is, molecule is linear, one dipole is going this way and that one dipole is going this way, they're going to cancel each other out and there's going to be no net dipole. And this molecule is going to be nonpolar because both domains are the same. If one domain was chlorine and one domain was fluorine, then there would be a net dipole because one would be more electronegative than the other. But because they're the same, there's no difference in the electronegativity, so they cancel each other out. So this molecule is nonpolar. Then we move on to CCl4. We, again, once again, figure out how many electrons there are in this molecule. Four from the carbon and seven times four from each chlorine and we get 32. We put the carbon in the middle and we bond one chlorine to the carbon. Then we just add the remaining electrons into the carbon and we have a perfectly content structure because they all have the octet rule, they all have eight electrons and we have no electrons missing. So then we go and figure out the geometry. Uh, we have four domains, so we know that it's tetra tetrahedral, and the domain geometry is the same as the molecular geometry because there are no non-bonding pairs. So then we go to figure out the dipoles with the electronegativity. We know that carbon has a 2.5 electronegativity and chlorine has a 3.0 electronegativity. So the positive side of the dipole is going to be facing the carbon and the negative is going to be facing the chlorine. We have one going this way and one going that way. So they'll, no. Okay, so since all domains are the same, then the tetrahedral molecule, even though the actual molecule doesn't look like this, since they are all the same, they will cancel each other out and there will be no net dipole, so this molecule is nonpolar. Lastly, we have O3, which is ozone. We, f we figure out the amount of electrons there are in this molecule, molecule, which is six times three, and we get 18. Then we put one oxygen in the middle, bond one on each side, and then we subtract four, which would give us 14 left. Then we add 6 to complete the octet on the out, outside atoms, and we have 2 left over. But our central atom is, does not have an octet, so this is not a good structure. Then we add a double bond, but we could either add a double bond on this oxygen or on this oxygen. Both of these structures are equally good. They both have the same formal charges, so they are both good structures. So the molecule would actually look something like this. There would be one and a half bond between each um, oxygen, oxygen bond, not a double bond. There wouldn't be a double bond in this molecule. And then we figure out the geometry. We can't forget about the two non-bonding pairs that were in this oxygen. So we see that there are three domains, the non-bonding pair and each oxygen. There are three domains and there is one non-bonding pair. So this structure, domain geometry, is actually trigonal planar, but the molecular geometry is bent if we don't count the non-bonding pair. There is actually no bond dipole because oxygen and oxygen obviously have the same electronegativity, but this molecule is polar because it is bent and there is this negative space here from the 
electron non-bonding pairs right here. So since this molecule is bent, it is polar even though there is no bond dipoles. So after doing all that, we go back and since we figured out that OF2 is polar and O3 is polar, we have two polar molecules left in the end. So again, some common mistakes are, for example, forgetting that the non-bonding pairs go together and they don't go one in the top and one in the bottom. That is not how the four domain geometry goes. So that's one of the common mistakes. People think that this molecule is actually linear and that the dipoles cancel out, but it's not. So that is one of the things that you have to watch out for. Also, as I mentioned before, a common mistake is forgetting that beryllium is an exception to the octet rule. Remember this and that this and that is what makes this molecule linear versus this one which is not.